It, it really does, Mike. We're getting word that a lot of the people are making their way inside the courtroom. George Torres' family is in there, but we can't take you in just yet because the judge, from our understanding, is not on the bench. Michael, before we went to a lunch break, there was another interesting legal argument. The uh, assistant state's attorney wanted to have an instruction saying that she did have to retreat. She had him inside that suitcase, but she should have had to retreat, which is an interesting argument because we are here in Florida. It's a stand your ground state. And what Mr. Jay was arguing is that because she had committed an aggravated assault, she then really shouldn't be able to fall, fall into that stand your ground kind of line of case law. But he couldn't charge her, from my understanding, with aggravated assault because of the statute of limitations. So Owens is going to be able to argue. I've heard a lot of people when I've talked with people about this case say he was inside that suitcase. She could have just left. She could have called 911, walked out of that apartment. But the jury is going to hear that she did not have a duty to retreat. 100% agree with you. Again, there are going to be members in the jury, though, who are going to say she could have called 911. If, if this, look at it like this, right? Let's just say, and this is what, I, if I was a fly on the wall in the, jur in the jury room, one of them is going to say, let's just say, take it as, as an assumption of fact. We, we have a crystal ball. We look into the future. She unzips the suitcase. He kills her. Let's just say we know for a fact that's going to happen. Why just fall asleep? Why not just call the police and leave and say, he's choking, come get him? By the way, had she done that? she would not have been charged. She would not have been charged, right? Because at the end of the day, what you have is, he went into the suitcase voluntarily. He asked her to zip him. She zipped him. He asked to get out. She was worried for her life. She called the police. The police came in. If he died and asphyxiated by that point, I think, in my opinion, she wouldn't have been charged, right? But one more thing, and I, I tried to see if this happened. I couldn't find it on the internet. I wanted to see if that, if in the voir dire process, Owens asked any of the jurors whether or not they're claustrophobic. I don't know if he did it. He might have, he might not have. If he didn't, I think it would be a mistake, and I'll tell you why. As a person who has severe claustrophobia, if I was on that jury, I would be getting everybody else in the jury riled up to how much of a torture it is to be in a suitcase zipped up and you can't get out and the person that you're asking the guy doesn't get you out. I'm getting choked up thinking about it because of this is the worst form of death for somebody who has any type of claustrophobia. So if any members in that jury have that, their mind is tainted. They will not be open to any. That's why you might see a hung jury, right? Because if there's someone on the jury who believes that she was right in her uh, justified in her behavior and that this does not rise to the level of murder too, and another member of the jury who believes this is absolute torture, it's sadistic torture, you might get a hung jury. You might. Uh, and if you do, I think if I was a fly on the wall in that jury and I listened to what they were doing, I would see a, 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 a basically a, a, a match between the, uh, you know, the claustrophobic person and the person who believed Sarah Boone. I believe she's guilty uh, only because I'm given the choices between murder two or didn't do anything culpable at all. But if I had the choice between murder two, full acquittal or involuntary manslaughter, it's involuntary manslaughter all day. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, Michael. Okay, we're going to get in a quick break.